And welcome back to my Origami Moana doll tutorial. Last time we ended up with a headless doll, so today we're going to fix that by making the neck and then the head. So let's get to it. Like row 9.5 from the previous video, which was between Moana's midriff and her top, the neck is only here to support the head of the doll and provide a point of attachment. Which I guess is the point of a neck in a real person too, but you know what I mean. Anyway, this is a structural support layer, so in theory you can make it whatever color you want because it'll just be covered by the head. I will be sticking with white paper because it's what I have lying around. So have your 16 pieces torn out and folded, and then I will show you what to do with them. I'm taking a piece and opening it down the middle. See this side? These are the pockets, and this side over here is the tail. Uh, disclaimer, these are not technical terms. Now take a pair of scissors and see this line where the pockets end? I want you to cut here and just snip the tail off your piece. See how the pockets are still intact? Take your pockets and stick them onto the doll, like this. Now set that aside and snip the tails off the rest of your pieces. And now it's time to glue the neck pieces on. This is my least favorite part of the entire process, but it has to be done. Hold your piece with the pockets facing you. Now fill both inner corners with glue, more glue than you would usually use for a piece. And then add a dab more further out on each side. and then stick your piece onto the doll. Notice that I'm keeping this piece perfectly vertical relative to the tabletop. You want them vertical or tilted slightly back. What you don't want is for it to be leaning out because that will make your doll's head too big. Once you have the angle you want, follow suit and glue on the rest of your pieces. The neck region is one of the most finicky parts of making a doll. If you don't use enough glue, the pieces will just fall off under pressure. And if you use too much glue, it'll sog up your paper or overflow from the pockets and make a mess. So just be patient with it, like with a toddler. And then once you're done gluing, set your doll aside to dry and leave it alone. Since the neck and shoulder pieces have only a small area of contact, it's a very delicate region, especially when it's drying. So we do not want to disturb it until it's completely dried. And we used a lot of glue to attach the neck because it's such a small area of contact, so it's going to be a while before it's safe to stack any more pieces onto the doll. I typically leave it alone overnight just to be safe, but luckily for those of you who are impatient, there is stuff you can be doing while you're waiting on the neck. You know, for instance... Yeah, while we wait for the neck to dry, we can start making the pieces for her head. Here's a list of everything you need to make. For the scalp, you need 59 pieces colored black to match Moana's hair color. Actually, this one's optional, as indicated by the asterisk, because it'll eventually be completely covered by Moana's hair, assuming you attach her hair correctly. So in theory, you could just leave it white or use whatever other color paper you want. I just color them black with colored pencils for the sake of it, but I also cut corners and only go for the paper lightly with my pencil so it comes out looking gray instead of black. It's not a big deal. The only thing you shouldn't use on these particular pieces is crayon, because this is exactly where we're going to be gluing Moana's hair. And anything wax-based like crayon may chip off, and take the glue with it, and then her hair will just fall out. Next, we need 47 pieces colored brown. These are the pieces that will make up Moana's face, so they should be the same color you use on her legs and midriff. For me, that was a combination of brown colored pencil and apricot crayon. And notice that using crayon here is fine because it's her face, so we won't need to glue any hair to it. You also need 8 pieces of this pinkish brown color. These are going to be Moana's cheeks. I just added a pink colored pencil to the combination I normally use for her skin tone. It's a weird color on its own, but it'll look fine against the normal brown of the rest of her face. And then for Moana's eyes, you need 6 pieces of this darker brown. I used a brown marker. And notice that you also need a color in the two sides here. That's because you're using a dark color on white paper and some of those regions might be visible. You also need seven brown pieces, the same color as the rest of her face, and her legs, and her midriff. 
but these ones will be colored all the way up to the top. That's because they are her forehead and will be fully visible on the finished doll. And finally, you need 13 black pieces, also colored all the way to the top. As you might have already guessed, they're going to be the part of her scalp that's at the same level as her forehead. Again, coloring these pieces is optional because her hair will cover them if you do it right. This is just a quick demonstration. Once again, you need 59 of these black pieces for the scalp, 47 brown ones for the face, 8 pinkish brown ones for the cheeks, 6 darker brown ones for the eyes, 7 of these brown ones for her forehead, and 13 of these black ones for the top of her scalp. This next step is entirely optional. I've lined up all my pieces using the head template. And starting from the end, I'm stacking the pieces from each row on top of each other, alternating backwards and forwards with each piece. I call this technique bundling, and it's just so I can keep track of which pieces belong in which row of the head. It also makes the stacking process a lot faster when you actually go and make the head because all the pieces you need will be right there. At this point, the neck of the doll should be dry, so it's time to make the head. Some of you astute viewers may have noticed something weird. Each row in the head has 20 pieces total. But Trisha, you may be saying, the neck only has 16 pieces. How do you stack 20 onto 16? Well, there's a method to this madness, and it involves expanding the first row of the head, the one that makes contact with the neck layer. We are basically going to insert four extra pieces into the head there. Yes, you can do that, and I'm going to show you how. This is the scheme for how you are going to stack on the first layer of the head. Notice that some pieces are stacked on in a staggered pattern marked in pink. That is, we'll be adding them between two pieces from the neck in that standard brick wall layout that we've been using for most of the doll's torso. Notice also that some of the pieces are stacked directly on top of the neck pieces, as marked in blue. These are going to be like when we added Moana's top onto her midriff. And finally, notice that 8 of the pieces from the head are only attached by one green line. The other pocket will be free hanging. That's where the extra 4 pieces come in. This part is kind of hard to explain with words, so I'll just let you watch me do it. First, I'm checking to make sure the neck is truly dry. Do not move on if your neck isn't ready. Notice that I went back with a light brown marker and filled in the bottom edge of the pieces. That's because this area will be visible even with the head stacked over it. The first piece I'm adding is a brown one in the middle of the face, and it's staggered. I'm just going to shut up now and let you follow along here.
Once you've added the first row of the head, it's just a simple matter of following the template pattern. Be sure to glue your pieces, either every piece or every other piece in each row. Also, don't forget that you need to glue every single piece in the forehead layer because there are no more rows after it. You'll notice as I make my way up the head that I tend to turn the entire doll upside down every now and then. That's just me checking and make sure that all the pieces in each row are stacked on evenly and the row is level. And there you have it, one bald Moana doll. Next time we'll be adding her hair and accessories, but at this point we are done with the origami part of the doll making. Everything else is just cosplay on a miniature scale. As always, the template doll pattern is on Google Docs, link in the description, and I would like to encourage you to check out my friend Rudy's gaming channel. Thumbs up if you found this video helpful, comment if you have questions, I'll see you guys next time for the final installment.